This is a GCSE Maths paper. It is the M3 paper and it's from January 2019 from CCEA. So let's take a look at question one. Um, Brian hired some equipment. Um, there was a fixed charge of £45 plus a higher fee of £13.50 per day. He paid £274.50 in total. How many days did he hire the equipment for? So we need to take off our fixed charge first of all. So it's £274.50. Take away £45 and that gives us £229.50. If we now divide our £229.50 by 13 pounds 50 that should tell us in the amount of days um, and that then is going to give us 17. place a digit in each box to make a true statement and um, probably easier to do the two numbers here first because of bid mass um, you're going to be doing that bit first so if we stick in a four and five here just for example four times five gives me 20 so i need another one so that would work for us there. There are other options for that. Question three then. Dodd's ice cream shop sold four sizes of ice cream tubs. The owner wants to see a pie chart showing the number of tubs sold. So first of all, we need to add this up here. 50 plus 34 plus 24 plus 12. That's going to give us 120. Our angles, we're going to add up to 360. So our multiplier here is going to be 3. Um, we need to multiply each of these in by 3, so that's going to be 150. 34 times 3 is 102. 24 times 3 is 72. And 12 times 3 then is 36. So our first one, small tubs in are going to be 150. So we set up our protractor. This bit goes to the center. And we're measuring around from zero. Not the best protractor here, but we should be okay. 120. So that then goes up to 150. Those then are the small ones. Uh, medium then are 102 degrees, so we start from our new line. And that's 90, that's 100, so 102 then is going to be here. Line there. Next one is 72. Again, starting from the new line, the one that we have just drawn. 50, 60, 72. Line here, and then we should be left with something reasonably close then to 36. So just a good way to check. And yep, yeah, that looks pretty much right on then for 36 degrees. So this was small. This was medium. This was large. And this was family. Some people like to see a title, so you might want to write down ice creams at the top. Um, and that's what we're looking for. Um, part B, complete the table to find the total number of scoops used. So that's the total number of tubs sold, number of scoops per tub. So the number of scoops we have here. Uh, so it's 24 times 3, which is 72. 12 times 10, which is 120. And if we add everything together there, it comes to 310. Question 4. Complete the table below for y equals 5x minus 4. And then on the grid, we need to draw our graph. So let's actually start with the number 2 here. It's a bit more straightforward without the minus. So we're going to exchange our x here for a 2. 5 times 2 gives me 10. Take away 4 um, gives me 6. Uh, minus 1. 5 times minus 1 gives me minus 5. Minus 5 minus 4 then is minus 9. On the grid below, draw the graph of y equals 5x minus 4. 
So we have the point minus 2, minus 14. So that's going to be that point there. Then we're going to minus 1, minus 9. 0, minus 4. 1, 1. Notice the scales are different here, so we need to be careful. 2, 6. 3, 11. And 4, 16. If you haven't got a straight line or if you have a point out of place, you've made a mistake, so it's worth going back and checking. And then a nice straight line then drawn through and go the, all the way through the grid. Don't just join the points up to so all the way from the start to the finish. Um, question five. Mary tried, Mary raised some money. She gave two fifths of the money to charity. She gave a quarter of the money to a housing project. She gave the rest of the money to a first aid group. What percentage of the money did the first aid group receive? So if we could change these to percentages then, we could take them away. So two fifths is going to be 40%. I hope you know that one fifth is 20%. So two fifths then is going to be 40%. And a quarter then is 25%. If we add those together, we get 65. And she's given the rest, you see, so it's 100 take away 65% and so our answer then in this case is 35. Um, question 6. The diagram below shows a rectangular garden with a circular pond in the centre. Work out the area of the pond, state the units of your answer. So our formula for area of a circle is area is pi r squared area then is pi multiplied and we just need to be a wee bit careful here they've given us the diameter so we need the radius so it's going to be 0 0.6 squared and if you put that into your calculator and go to two decimal places you'll end up one, with 1.13 1 and that's meters squared and we have that there and you get a mark in this particular question for putting in your units it says state the units of your answer uh, paving costs 30 pounds per square meter um, it can only be bought in whole square meters how much will it cost to pave the section shown on the diagram well we need to be a bit careful with this but um, let's see um, so we are going to do let's see so if we have paving bit is 6.5 and then that is going to be um, 1.6 so let's do that 6.5 multiplied by 1.6 just give me a wee second to get the calculator on 6.5 multiplied by 1.6 and that then gives me 10.4 uh, we need to take away then i hope you can see this we need to take away then um half of our circle There's probably a more straightforward way of doing this if i find the area of the whole thing and then take away um, the circle so our circle was 1.13 so 1.13 divided by 2 is 0.565 and we take that away then from the 10.4 and, and that gives us 9.834 835 I think is fine for that and it says it's 30 pounds per square meter so we're going to times that then so it's 9.8 so we're actually we're not going to times it by that we're going to do 10 times 30 because it has to be full square meters 10 times 30 and then that's going to be for us 300 pounds I find that question a little bit suspect because you're never quite sure I mean if you're taking away this area here and you're buying it in meter squared and um, it mightn't quite work out but I think that's what they want us to do in this particular question question seven Leah wants to check how economical her car is she travels 275 miles using 22 liters of petrol how many miles does her car 
travel per liter of petrol so that's a straightforward one we do 275 and we're going to divide it by 22 and we get then 12.5 miles the 275 mile journey took Leah 5 hours 30 minutes uh, what was our average speed so our speed as we know then is distance over time so it's 275 and here we need to be a wee bit careful 5 hours 30 minutes and we're in miles per hour here so many hours is that actually going to be we can't write 5.3 that doesn't make sense 30 minutes is half an hour so it's actually 5.5 so if we divide the that by 5.5 we'll get 50 miles per hour uh, question 8 Jane owns a hotel on Monday morning 54 of our 75 guests had breakfast what percentage had breakfast this question appears all the time you should be very comfortable with it it's a bit like getting 54 out of 75 in our test and working out a percentage so it's 54 over 75 times by a hundred and that gives us then 72 percent question 9 multiply out the 5 times the 2t is going to give us 10t and the 5 times the 7 plus 35 so 10 T plus 35 factorize common factor we can take out as 8 so that's then going to be 2R take away 1 so that's 8 upon 2R take away 1 um, on to question 10 Dean bought a new car, he had to pay £220 plus 20% VAT per month for three years. The mileage allowed before any charge was 30,000 miles for three years. Each additional mile was charged at 8p per mile. After three years, Dean had driven 37,200 miles. How much did Dean pay in total for the three year period? So he travelled, sorry, he paid 220 plus 20%. 20 so we need to add on then our 20% onto our 220. So we can just add a fifth if you wish, that would be fine. But 220. So 20% of 220 is 44. So he paid then 220 plus 44, which is 264. So he did 264 for three years, and that was his monthly payment, so that's 36 months. It's 264 times the 36 gives me 9,504. What about his mileage? So the first 30,000 miles was okay, but it's the extra 7,200, and then that's 8p. Just be careful here. 7200 multiplied by 8. So if we go 7200 multiplied by 8 gives us 57600. But remember that that's pence. So in terms of pounds, it's 576 pounds. So there's our two values there, 576 and 9,504. If we add those together, 9,504 plus 576, we get 10,080 pounds. Question 11. Write an expression in terms of x for the perimeter of the triangle shown. So it's going to be x plus 2x plus 3, which is this side, plus x plus 9. The perimeter of this triangle um, is, sorry, 32. We should tidy this up really. Sorry, I should have written this up here, but that'll tidy up and join together like terms, and it's actually going to be 4x plus 12. Um, the perimeter of this triangle is 32. Write down an equation in terms of x. We know this is a perimeter, so it's going to be 4x plus 12 equals 32. Solve your equation to find x. Very straightforward equation if we can get that far. Um, I would take away 12 from both sides. That would give me 4x then is 20. Divide both sides by 4. And I get x equals 
5. Question 12, a, part 1. Fiona wanted to do a survey about attendance at her school. She designed a questionnaire for students to complete. One of the questions was, how many days have you had off school? State one criticism of the question. Um, there's a couple of things we could say about it, but probably the most obvious one to me is that it doesn't give any time period. So you might, is she asking like for the last five years or the last ten years or whatever? Um, so there's no time period. She decides to give her questionnaires out to the first 20 students coming out of Year 12 Assembly one Monday. State two reasons why her sample may not be representative of the whole school population. Well, the first one's quite obvious, I think. She only asks Year 12. And there are other options. Maybe not everybody goes to Assembly. But the other one that um, the answer she actually has is that we're... Um, only ask students who were in that day. Um, so that could be our answer then to that. Let's take a wee look at it. part B. Fiona asked the school office for information about pupils who had arrived late to school on a certain day. They told her that 14 pupils were late that day. The list below shows how many minutes late each pupil was. Show this information in an ordered stem and leaf diagram. So we need to order the numbers and then get them in the right way. So if I do my stem like this, and it looks like the highest one there is 38. I can't see anything in the 40s. So if we go zero, one, two, and three. Um, and then if we get, so the only one here for zero then is going to be eight. And then there's plenty in the tens. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we try and get those in order, there is an 11. There is a 12. There is a 14. There's a 15. There are two 16s. And there's a 19. So we have those, then anything in the 20s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so what's our smallest one then, there's a 3, 23, 24, 26, 27 and 29, then there's only one here which is 38, uh, we need to have our key obviously completed, and if I go 3, it means 38. Another thing that should be the case, and hopefully you then see it by my ruler, these need to be on top of each other. So you should be able to draw a wee line down in between them so you can see it nearly like a bar chart, I always think, going this way here. You can see the one then in the tens has the biggest column from there. A badge is the shape of a quarter circle as shown below. Calculate the perimeter of the badge. So we can see this is a quarter circle. So what I'm going to do is find the area of the whole, sorry, not the area. We don't want the area. We want the circumference of the whole circle. Circumference is 2 pi r. So it's going to be 2 times pi times 9. And that gives me 56.549. Um, I want a quarter of that, so if I do 56.549 divided by 4, I get something in around 14.14. So what have I found? I found that distance there. I want the perimeter of the badge, so I then have to do 14.14 plus 9 plus 9, and that gives us then 32.14 centimeters. Uh, question 14. The test scores for 10 boys in a class are these. The mean test score for 5 girls in a class is 8. Calculate the mean for this class. So we can't just work out the mean for the boys here and divide it by 10 and then find the average of these two because there were more boys and girls. So we just need to find our totals. Um, so if we go for the total for the boys 
and we just add these numbers up on a calculator if you wish and um, it comes to 65 total for the girls we need to think about this one a little bit so there were five girls and the main was eight where did we get eight from we added them all up and divided by five so to get our total we're going to do then five times eight and that gives us 40 our overall total then is going to be 105 and so our mean is going to be 105 divided by how many there are in total there were 10 boys and 5 girls so it's going to be 15 and our answer for their mean then is 7 Question 15. Given that 4,500 equals 2 to the power of a multiplied by 3 squared multiplied by 5 to the power of b, work out the values of a and b. We have two ways. I'm going to split this up as a product of primes. You can either do 4,500 and start dividing by your primes, like that, or you could set it up as a factor tree, which is the way I'm going to do it. Two things that multiply together to get 4,500. Um, I'm going to go for 45 on 100. Let's deal with the 45. It's going to be 5. Now 5 is prime, so I'm putting a square around that one. And then that's 9. And then we split that up into its 3 on 3. 100. Let's go for 10 and 10. Neither of which are prime, so it's circles. And then 2 and 5. and 2 and 5. That means 4,500 we can write as, there's two of those, so that's 2 squared. Multiply by how many 3's do we have? 2 and then 5's 1, 2, 3, so it's 5 cubed. Um, looking back up here then to the question, 2 to the power of a, so our a then must be 2 and our b must be 3. Hence, write down the lowest value by which 4,500 needs to be multiplied to make a cube number. We need to make these up to the lowest multiple then of 3. So to make that up, we need to multiply that one by 2. If we multiply by 2 here, that's going to increase the power by 1. So it's a 2. And then there's a 3 as well. The 5 is already power of 3, so we're OK. So our answer to that question then is 6. Um, question 16. The speeds of cars on a road were recorded over a period of time. The results are recorded in a grouped frequency table. How many cars are travelling more than 40 miles per hour? So it's this, this and this. Are those three groups adding those together? Then you get 22. Which class interval contains the median speed? We need to add these up and see from there. So 12 plus 18 is 30, 46. So it's going to be 50. Is the total and the median then of 50 is halfway in between 25 and 26 so we want to see where the 25th car and the 26th car would be so the first 12 are here we're going to do like a cumulative frequency then the next uh, 16 up here so that takes us up to 28 so 25 and 26 are in this group here so our answer to that then is going to be 30 to 40. so we have that Calculate an estimate for the mean speed of the cars on the road. That's what our extra two columns are for here. So we need to find in our midpoint because we don't have something to multiply it by. Nice and straightforward for these ones. 25, 35, 45, 55 and 65. And then we're going to do frequency times midpoint. Some people like to call our midpoint X, so it's FX. We're working out, but that's okay. 12 times 25 gives us 300. 16 times 35, I think, gives us 560. 18 times 45 gives us 810. 2 times 55 is 110. 2 times 65 is 130. If we add all of these up, we get 1910. Again, just use your calculator for that, and we can find in our estimated mean now. So, estimated mean. Our calculation is 1,910 divided by 50. Put that into your calculator and you end up then with 38.2.
Question 17. A child's height increased from 84 centimetres to 91 centimetres. Calculate the percentage increase. So how much did it increase by? It was 7. And that's over 84. And we times then by 100%. That gives us either 8 and a third, or if you want, or 8.33%. A, B, C, D is a square of side 6 centimetres. How much longer is A, C than A, D? That's 6, so that's our A, D, and we need to find this one. Hopefully you can spot it's going to be a pi 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 <laughs> excuse me, Pythagoras theorem. So C, A, and B. And Pythagoras theorem states that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. That's going to give us the length of A, C, and then we can subtract them. C squared equals A squared, so 6 squared is 36, plus 36. C squared is 72. C is the square root of 72. The square root of 72 then is going to be, just work it out, 8.485. So that means our length AC is 8.485. So how much longer is AC than AD? So we need to do then 8.485 take away 6. And that gives us 2.49 if we want in terms of our centimetres, which we could write down there. All right. Question 19. Yasmin draws a rectangle measuring 2 cm by 4 cm. Both are measured to the nearest centimetre. She says the area must be 8 cm to the nearest centimetre square. Explain why she is wrong. Well, if we just go for the lowest possible and the highest possible, we'll work it out. This here, 2 cm, could be as low as 1.5. Um, and this one could be as low as 3.5. If we multiply those, you get 5.25, and you round that to the nearest centimetre, it's certainly not 8. So there's the reason really there, if you wish. Um, or, if you wanted, you could write that it could be 2.5 multiplied by 4.5, which is kind of the higher region, and that's 11.25. But either of those would work. Number 20, Peter, Jack and Colin share a flat. They pay the rent monthly. Peter pays 30% of the monthly rent. Jack pays three-eighths of the monthly rent. Colin pays 520. Calculate the total monthly rent for the flat. So we're gonna, I'm gonna change everything in the percentages and see if I can suss it from there. You could do it as fractions if you wanted. Um, Peter is 30%. Jack is three-eighths. So what's that gonna be? I know an eighth is 12.5%. So 3 eighths is going to be 37.5%. That means Colin, 30 and 37 and a half can be 67 and a half. Take that away from 100, give you 32.5%. And we know that that equals the 520 pounds. That's how much Colin pays. We need to find the total. So this is 32.5%. So to find 1%, we would do 520 divided by 32.5 and if you put that in your calculator you get 16 that means then a hundred percent is going to be 1600 pounds and that's our answer to that number 21 um, Slightly unusual question, I think, this one, because it asks you to factorise, it asks you the same thing, but each of these questions are slightly different, it's a slightly different method. Um, so first one, 10cp squared minus 4cp, we're just going to try and take out common factors here. First of all, look at the number, 10 and 4, so we can take out a 2. There's a c in both of those, so we can take out a c, and there's a p in both, so we can take out a p. We can't take out a p squared, because there's no p squared there. Again, nice and slowly, this times what? gives me this here. First of all, my number, that's a 5, because 2 times 5 gives me 10. CP, the CP squared, is going to be a P. 2CP, so take away here, times what gives me 4CP, it's going to just give us that. So put it in our answers then, 2CP upon 5P 
minus 2. Um, y squared minus 1 is a quadratic, but it's a special type of quadratic, and it's the difference of two squares. So that's going to be y plus 1 upon y minus 1. Next one, k squared minus 2k minus 3. We're looking here, again it's a quadratic, and the way we'll do this one is to work out two numbers that multiply to give minus 3, and the same two numbers add to give me minus 2. We can then substitute them straight in. If this was not a 1k squared, we would have to split the middle term and do an extra couple of lines of working, but because the 1 k squared, we can just sub it straight in. So we have a k here. What two numbers are going to work for here? So minus 3 and 1, I think, are going to work. I always put them in and then just check. So, sorry, that's a plus 1. Minus 3 times 1 gives me minus 3, and if I add those, I get minus 2. So that looks like it works. Yeah, part D, quite an unusual looking one here, uh, but you can see there's an x minus 2 in a bracket here and an x minus 2 in a bracket here, so we can just take that out. So if x minus 2, and then if we do a bigger bracket here, you do a square bracket there if you wish to wouldn't mind, this times what gives me this? It's going to be x minus 2, and this times what gives me this? That's going to be 5. Now this big bracket will tidy up. X minus 2 plus 5. This wee bracket in here isn't actually doing anything, so that's going to change then to an X plus 3. So our final answer we can write then as X minus 2 upon X plus 3. Um, question 22. Uh, let's see, PQR is a right angle triangle. This is 5.4, this is 13. How many degrees is angle P bigger than angle R? So we need to work out these two angles here, P and R. I'm going to set it up and work out P first, and then we'll have a wee think about how to find R after that. So if this is my angle, this then is my opposite side, this is my adjacent side, and this is my hypotenuse. So which two do I have? I have A and I have H, so I'm going to use cos. Cos x equals a over h. Cos x equals 5.4 over 13. And then x is going to be cos minus 1, 5.4 over 13. Uh, if we work that out, that's our p, obviously. Uh, put it into our calculator, we get 65.4. 4, 5, 6 or something in and around there. So we have that as 65. We could just sit and redo it again where label this angle. This is O, this is A, this is H. But because we know this angle and this angle, we can just take them away from 180 and get our answer then for R. So if we do that, we get a value of R then as 24 taking the exact value then here and it says how much bigger by how many degrees is P bigger than R and if we take these two values away from each other to the nearest degree then it's going to be 41 degrees question 23 is an algebraic fraction equation a couple of different ways of doing it you could cross multiply i always think you need to tread very carefully cross multiply and make sure you know what you're doing cross an equal sign here we can do it i'm going to do it a different way i'm going to make this into a denominator then of six so i need to times top and bottom of this one then by three because the fraction is not actually changing the value of it so multiplying the top line by three i'm just going to write three upon x plus three over 6 equals 5x over 6. Uh, I can then, well I could times out the bracket first here, it wouldn't matter, um, but I'm going to times everything then by 6. If I times both sides by 6, that then makes the fractions disappear. So if 3x plus 3 is 5x, multiplying out my bracket, 3x plus 9 is 5x, taking away 3x from both sides, 
gives me 9 equals 2x and then I have 4.5 equals x. So my answer for x down here is 4.5. Question 24 then, the cumulative frequency table gives data about the length of time it takes for 50 workers to travel to work one morning. Um, and so we have the information here. Then on the next page it says, on the graph paper below, draw a cumulative frequency graph to illustrate the data. So we need to plot these points up above down to here. Incidentally, it's worth noting, they've given us cumulative frequency here. They don't always do that. Sometimes they give frequency, in which case we would need to add this up then as we go, but as it is, they've done some of the work for us, so it's not too bad. Sometimes we need to add our extra column. In this case, we don't. So we need first point is 20 and seven. So if I go down to here, 20, and then up to seven, and a nice clear mark, then where it is. The next one, you can't see it, but take my word for it, is 25 and 22. We'll come down again for this one. The next one then is 30 and 36. So 30 and 36, 35 and 45, 35, 45. The next one is 45 and 49. And the final one is 60 and 50. Now you might be tempted to get the ruler right here, but this is supposed to be a curve. Um, so we do our best job here at trying to draw a curve. Not a great job, but it will hopefully do. And that's then our cumulative frequency curve. Um, so that's that bit done. Uh, use the graph to estimate the percentage of workers whose journey time was longer than 40 minutes. So we need to go up here and then go across at the 40. So here's 40. Nice thick line to show the examiner. And even show the direction you're going and then read across from here my line is not great there but it'll be close enough and i think that's reasonably close then to 47 it's slightly slightly higher my line's not great there but i'm going to take 47 anyway in this particular instance and yours might be slightly different but that's okay just work with what you have as long as your graph isn't way off you should still get the mark so what does 47 tell us those journey to, whose journey time was longer than 40 minutes so 47 out of the 50 people took um, 40 minutes or fewer, or less, sorry. Um, and so that means there's going to be 3 out of the 50 um, that took more. So as a percentage, times by 100, or just, you know, change that to 6 over 100, our answer then is going to be 6%.